And Psalms 28, another Psalm of King David. This one is not sort of a praising, uh, praising of God Psalm as well, but this one's also a little more down to earth and understanding our looking at things, not from, oh, God is amazing and wonderful and up here, more from I'm down here and I need help. Help me, God, is more of what this one's like. So let's jump in and start reading this one. Verse one, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. That's that rock we talked about last, last uh, video. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Now, verse 1 has an interesting point in here to be not silent to me, lest if you are silent, I become like them that go down into the pit. Why do people go down into the pit? Meaning into the temptations of the, of the devil and following him is because they don't heed the voice of God. They don't hear the voice of God. So God can be silent to us and not speak to us, or we cannot listen to God when he speaks to us. So we can make him silent in our life. And that's the thing that he's, David's worried about is, is teach me, help me, guide me, help me to learn, walk in thy ways so that I don't fall into the pit. Uh, verse 3, draw me not away with the wicked, with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. So that's that two-sidedness. I speak peace to my neighbors. I want to be nice to my neighbors, but deep inside, I want to destroy my neighbors as well. So that's not good. That's not a whole-hearted person. That's not somebody who is coming from the heart out. This is somebody who is has a heart that is incorrect, but an outward appearance that they try to appear as if they're okay. Wolves in sheep's clothing, other things like that. It's the core that's gone bad. They need to change that around and truly live the gospel from inside, accept it from inside. Uh, verse 4, give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. Because they reward not, regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. So he's, he's kind of switching this now. He's saying, you know, the wicked are people who appear good, but deep down are really not good. They secretly, uh, they live a life that looks nice, but under the surface, it's terrible. It's just bad. So this hollowness to them, uh, that they will get their just dues basically because of that, because they, they truly want wickedness, they'll eventually get more wickedness, which is sin and the punishments of that. And then he says in here, verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. So the, the last half of this chapter, David is not talking about so much the wicked, and he doesn't want to be associated with them, but being saved. So an away from and a towards pattern in the same chapter to describe this idea of moving to Christ. Moving As we move to Christ, we move away from other things. That's just how it works. When you spend your time or money in one area, that prevents you from spending your time and money in another area. That's opportunity cost. So when you make your choice to follow God, you by default make the choice to not follow the world. And vice versa. If you follow the world, you are defaulting to make a choice not to follow God. You can't do both. It's one or the other. If you're going to be whole. If you try to split yourself, you will fall. Because that's not the way that God wants it. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to come from the heart out. Not from the outside in. Very important concept. So uh, some fun contrasts and some fun things we get to learn from this. Look forward to hearing in the comments, or reading in the comments, what you have to say about this idea of this perspective that he has given us. This away from and towards patterns to help us understand this movement towards God that, that we should be doing as well. So we'll read those comments and reply back to you there.
We'll see you in the next chapter.